Hello class, my name is Rita Berry, and I'd like to introduce to you a theory analysis on the theory of reasoned action and the theory of planned behavior. Let me first give you a theory description. The theory of reasoned action and the theory of planned behavior focus on theoretical constructs concerned with individual motivational factors as determinants of the likelihood of performing a specific behavior. The theory of reasoned actions was originally developed in 1967 by Dr. Martin Fishman. This resulted from attitude research from the expectancy value models. Dr. Fishman looked at attitude toward an object and attitude toward a behavior with respect to that object. In the 1970s, Dr. Fishman began working together with Dr. Isaac Azen. Azen and Fishman formulated the theory of reasoned action after trying to estimate the discrepancy between attitude and behavior. This theory of reasoned action was related to voluntary behavior. Later on, behavior appeared not to be 100% voluntary and under control. This resulted in the addition of perceived behavioral control. With this addition, the theory was called the theory of planned behavior. The theory of planned behavior is a theory which predicts deliberate behavior because behavior can be deliberative and planned. The development of the theory of reasoned action and the theory of planned behavior originated in the field of social psychology. This theory has had a major influence on both research and practice in health behavior and health education in studying attitudes towards behaviors. The theory of reasoned action and theory of planned behavior has been successfully has been used successfully to predict and explain a wide range of health behaviors and intentions, including smoking, drinking, exercise, breastfeeding, substance use, HIV STD prevention behaviors and use of contraceptives, mammograms, safety helmets, and seat belts. These are just um, skimming the surface of of some of the articles using the, this theory that is out there. Along with health behaviors and health education, this theory has also been used in studying of sales agents and clients with ethics behind commission. It has also been used in a study of grassroots political organizations, the bias and conflict seen from political views. Evidence comes from hundreds of studies that have been summarized in several meta-analysis and reviews. So let's talk about this model and its concepts. Theory of reasoned action suggests that a person's behavior is determined by his or her intention to perform the behavior and that this intention is in turn a function of his or her attitude toward the behavior and his or her subjective norm. The best predictor of behavior is intention. Intention is the cognitive representation of a person's readiness to perform a given behavior, and it is considered to be the immediate antecedent of behavior. This intention is determined by three things, their attitude toward the specific behavior, their subjective norms, and their perceived behavioral control. The theory of planned behavior holds that only specific attitudes toward the behavior in question can be expected to predict that behavior. In addition to measuring attitudes toward the behavior, we also need to measure people's subjective norms, their beliefs about how people they care about will view the behavior in question. To predict someone's intentions, knowing these beliefs can be as important as knowing the person's attitudes. Finally, perceived behavioral control influences intentions. Perceived behavioral control refers to the people's perceptions of their ability to perform a given behavior. These predictors lead to intention. A general rule, the more favorable the attitude and subjective norm and the greater the perceived control, the stronger should the person's intention to perform the behavior in question. So let's put this theory to use now. Let's talk about smoking sensation. So the behavior is smoking sensation. 
the behavioral intention is, I want to quit smoking. The attitude toward the behavior is, smoking is not good for my health. The behavioral belief is, if I don't stop smoking, I may not live long enough to see my grandchildren grow up. The evaluation is, if I stop smoking, I will live longer and see my grandchildren get married. The sub subjective norm is, I wonder if my husband would like me to quit smoking. The normative beliefs are, I know other people do not want to smell cigarette smoke on me. The motivation is, I can do this and make my husband happy and be healthier. So now let's talk about the advantages of these theories. These theories are used to predict and understand healthy and unhealthy behavior and the outcomes of behavior. Examples such as alcohol abuse, smoking behavior, physical activity, and weight loss. The theory also leverages important implications for health education in examining health-related behaviors. And it can also lead to the implementation and development of health prevention programs. The limitations of this theory include factors such as personality and demographic variables that are not taken into consideration. There is much ambiguity regarding how to define perceived behavioral control, and this creates a measurement problem. Assumption is made that perceived behavioral control predicts actual behavioral control. This may not always be the case. The theory of planned behavior only works when some aspect of the behavior is not under um, actual willful control over behavior. And the longer the time interval between behavioral intent and behavior, the less likely the behavior will occur. The theory is also based on the assumption that human beings are rational and make systematic decisions based on available information. Unconscious motives are not considered. Not only have the, has this theory been used for health behavior education and preventive programs, it is also used in nursing research. Research examining the beliefs, attitudes, and intentions of healthcare workers was, divine, was identified covering various topics. Ward in 2012 looked at infection control actions and behaviors among nursing and midwife students. Zor, Stofus, Holden, Parks, and Swan examined knowledge attitudes and practices of oncology nurses regarding advanced care planning for their patients. Other researchers have used these theories to look at health behaviors in diverse areas, including such things as organ donation and also reasoning and thoughts associated with illegal performance enhancing substances. I'd like to share with you um, two articles um, that I've summarized um, that used uh, this theory. The first is the theories of recent action and planned behaviors as models of condom use. It was a meta-analysis. Because condom use can prevent infection with HIV and other STDs, health agencies have designed various interdisciplinary efforts oriented by behavioral prediction models to persuade people to use condoms consistently. This article concluded that interventions emphasizing norms and perceived behavioral control alone could be less effective than programs that attempt to change perceptions of the outcomes of condom use. The findings suggest that changing attitudes will produce greater strides in stemming the current HIV pandemic. The second article that I want to share with you is the theory of reasoned action and theory of planned behavior based dietary interventions in adolescents and young adults. This was a systematic review. Childhood obesity has reached epidemic proportions in many nations around the world, and the theory of planned behavior and the theory of reasoned action have been used to successfully plan and evaluate numerous interventions for many different behaviors. The aim of this study was to systematically review and synthesize 
um, the theory um, based dietary behavior interventions targeting adolescents and young adults. The article showed that there is a clear need to improve dietary behaviors in adolescents and young adults worldwide. By developing and implementing multi-component theory-based randomized control studies, which include rigorous process impact and outcome evaluations, researchers can determine the mediators of behavior and modify them to change dietary behaviors. The overall impact of theory-based multi-component interventions can be the reduction of obesity and other related health issues that will allow people to live longer and healthier lives. I'd like to end um, by talking about um, an article on the efficacy of uh, the theory of reasoned action and theory uh, planned behavior. Um, this meta-analysis provided support for the efficacy of, of this theory as a predictor of intentions and behavior. Although prediction is superior for self-reported than observed behavior, the theory is still capable of explaining about 20% of the variance in prospective measures of actual behavior. Um, the present findings therefore collaborate those of previous um, um, meta-analysis is on this theory, as well as expanding on some of the theoretical debates surrounding the model. There was also evidence to suggest that measures of intention, self-prediction, and desires possess discriminant validity, although only relatively weak evidence for the proposed self-efficacy perceived control over behavior distinction. Finally, I think it's it's important um, to also state that work on additional normative variables, um, such as moral and descriptive norms, may increase the predictive power of the normative component of this model. The next three slides um, have references that I'd like to share with you. Um, there, were, there were several great articles here about this theory. Thank you so much. I look forward to hearing um, your thoughts about this presentation. Good night.